All right, question 17, the last of these practice problems for the Praxis 5165 test. Dealing with probability in this problem. We have a two-sided coin, uh, all right, as opposed to like a three-sided coin, is unfairly weighted so that when it is tossed, the probability that heads will result is twice the probability that tails will result. Um, from that, it might be obvious that the probability of heads is exactly two-thirds and the probability of tails is one-third. But if that's not obvious, what you could do is you could say, well, it's got to either be heads or tails. So the probability of heads plus the probability of tails has got to be equal to 100% or 1. And it tells me that the probability of heads is twice the probability of tails. So the probability of heads is twice the probability of tails. So I have these two equations and two unknowns, P of H and P of T. So I solve one of the equations for one of the unknown and plug it into the other one. This equation's already solved for P of H. So I plug that in up here. Instead of writing P of H, I write 2 times P of T plus this P of T is equal to 1. So I have three of these P of T things that's equal to 1. And therefore, P of T is equal to 1 third. And the second I know that P of T is equal to 1 third, I use this equation, which says that the probability of heads is equal to 2 times the probability of tails, which we figured out was 1 third. 2 times 1 third is 2 thirds. Or maybe you don't need to do all this and you can just look at it and tell. If heads is twice as likely, there's a 2 and 3 chance of getting heads. Anyways, this coin is tossed three separate times, independently as implied here. And what we want to figure out is what is the probability that tails will result on exactly two of the tosses. So the way I think about this is we need tails twice and heads once, right? The probability of tails is one third. So we need something with a one third probability to happen and then something with a one third probability to happen again and then something with a two thirds probability to happen. Since they're independent, we can just multiply together these guys. One third times one third times two thirds is two divided by 27. But that's not the right answer. I'm surprised they didn't make that one of the answers. This is the probability of getting tails, then tails, then heads. But we don't need to get them in that order. We could get tails and then heads and then tails, for example. Or we could get heads and then tails and then tails. So the probability of exactly two tails is kind of this amount plus this amount plus this amount. If you multiply these three fractions, you get the same 2 over 27. Multiply these three fractions, you get 2 over 27. And then if you sum these three fractions, they have a common factor of 3. You get 2 over 9, which is choice A, the answer to this question. This method works out fine as long as we're only tossing a coin three times and we want exactly two. But what if we were tossing a coin, I don't know, 95 times, and we wanted 47 of them to be tails or something? It'd be really annoying to try to list out all the different possibilities. There's formulas for such things, maybe combinations and permutations rings a bell. But rather than overload you with too many formulas, why don't I just show you how you can do this problem, no matter how many coins you're tossing, with your calculator. When you're in a situation like this where two different things can happen, you have what's called a binomial distribution. A binomial distribution has two different parameters. The first is the number of trials, the number of times you're tossing the coin, which is three. And the second is the probability of success. Here it's up to us to define what success means. Is head success or tail success? It really doesn't matter, you just have to pick one. Since the question asks what is the probability that tails will result on exactly two of the tosses, let's call tails a success, in which case the probability of success, as we figured out above, is one third. With these two parameters, three and one third, we can use the binomial distribution function on our calculator. The challenge there is first of all, finding the binomial distribution function. If you just watched the video on practice problem 16, you saw a question that dealt with the normal distribution function. There was this special menu that dealt with all the different distributions. That menu is exactly where we're gonna find the binomial distribution, which kind of makes sense. Maybe you recall that it was kind of hidden above the variables key, so we hit second and then variables to get into that menu. Here's normal CDF that we used in the last problem. That's not what we want for this one because we're not dealing with the normal distribution, we're dealing with the binomial distribution. So scroll down a little bit and eventually you'll find the binomial distributions. Before, we used normal CDF because we wanted the cumulative distribution function. We wanted the total area from like six to eight, for example. When you want the total area in a range, you use the cumulative distribution function. When you want to know the probability of just one single result, you use the probability density function. We want to know the probability that we get exactly two tails. Not the probability that we get more than two tails or between one and three tails or something like that. If there were a range of values, we'd use binomial CDF. 
But if there's just one specific value, we use binomial PDF. When you use binomial PDF, there's three things you need to tell your calculator. If you have the user-friendly software in here, it might ask you for those three things. But if you don't, like me, you need to know what it's waiting for. The first two things it's waiting for are the parameters in the binomial distribution, the number of trials that you have, and the probability of success. So I'm going to use binomial PDF. And I'm going to put in a 3 first to represent the fact that I'm tossing this coin three times, and then a 1 third second to represent the probability of a success, which I'm calling tails, to be 1 third. My third and final argument into the binomial PDF function is the number of successes that I want. I want to know the probability that there's exactly two tails, exactly two successes. So I put a two in this third spot and hit enter. It'll calculate for me 0.2 repeating, which is the same as two ninths. In case you don't believe me, there's two ninths. We can use this calculator function to get the same answer that we got before. The advantage of the calculator function is if we had more than three trials, it might be really tedious to list out all the different combinations. I suspect if this showed up on your test, it would look kind of like you see in 17 here, where we'd have a reasonable amount of trials and you'd be able to solve it either way. So I suspect you can do this problem either of the two ways I demonstrated.